Good evening, YouTube. Dave here from Funky Sloth Comic and Collectibles. I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. Today is January 31st, 2021, and it's time for a movie TV talk video. Um, as always, uh, before I start tonight's video, I would like to give a shout out to somebody in our YouTube community that is into the movie and TV talk. Tonight's uh, shout out goes to Robert Meyer Burnett. I love Robert's channel. He has videos just about every night, sometimes a couple a day. He's great at um, talking about how, how movies, you know, in society are intertwined with each other. And how everything is just, they feed off each other. And his stuff, he, he talks about everything. Um, he reads letters from community members and, you know, answers their questions. Um, he was great when he was with John Schnepp over at Collider. I've um, I've uh, actually uh, unsubscribed from the Collider ever since they changed their format over there and totally ruled the show. But, you know, John Schnepp, you'll hear me bring him up a lot. Uh, he died a couple years ago from a stroke. You'll hear me, like I said, mention him a lot. But him and uh, Robert Meyer, Meyer Burnett, when they were together, especially with Comic Talk, was awesome. But Robert's channel is great. So go ahead and visit his channel. His channel is The Burnett Work. The Burnett Work. So, now on to tonight's video. <clears throat> so, I had my talking points in order for tonight. But then something happened. So I'm going to start off where something happened. And that would be the announcement of... The Justice League, uh, the Snyder Cut Justice League, when that was going to drop. And that's the big news. Um, the Snyder Cut has officially been confirmed a release date. The release date is going to be March 18th. And it's not going to be set up as a miniseries, as what people were thinking it's going to be set up as. It's actually going to be set up as a right around a little over a four hour movie event. Um, so it makes for a long watch. Four hours is a long watch, but I will definitely watch it. Along with the release date, they also released uh, three uh, three movie posters, which are all really cool. All black and white. There's three of them. And I think, in my opinion, I'll let you see what you guys think. Each one of the uh, posters is, I think, a personal take on John, uh, on Snyder's uh, maybe dig at uh, Warner Brothers. Look at, the, look at the three posters, and I think you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, the first trailer that came back in, what was it, back in August for the Snyder Cut was really good. I enjoyed the black white one. But it was good. It was set to uh, Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen, which is a great song. Anyways, so I think you're going to see this movie, the Justice League that we were supposed to see. Before uh, Snyder had to get done for personal reasons, then movie reasons, I think you were going to see a darker version of the Justice League. The Justice League was okay. It had some really cool parts in it. You got to, and, you know, and for me, you got to see the Justice League. Um, but the movie had some writing issues, storytelling issues, and little things. And then, you know, they made Batman kind of sound like a comedian in a couple parts, and he's not. But the movie was good. I mean, I, I, it's not horrible by any means, but I'm hoping to see what Snyder's cut is going to be. Because you can see the difference between Snyder and Josh Whedon's when he took over the movie and which direction he headed, he actually headed towards a most Marvel version of DC, which you cannot do. DC is a darker um, universe compared to uh, Marvel. So I'm looking forward to seeing which direction Snyder was taking. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, again, March 18th, it's a Thursday, which is kind of weird, but being on HBO Max, oh, that's right, it's going to be on HBO Max, um, but it's a Thursday release, March 18th, it's a four-hour, uh, cut, uh, it's actually saying it's going to be a little over four hours, okay, so, that was topic number one, 
Topic number two. So I had to move a couple things around, and I pushed one of my movie talk thing, so I'm going to push that to next Friday. Um, topic number two, uh, Quiet Place 2. Looks like Quiet Place 2 has been moved again. And now they're saying the release date for the movie is going to be September 17th of 2021. Uh, Quiet Place, which came out in 2018, was one of my favorite movies of that year. Uh, it was just, it was new. It was fresh. It was just the way they did everything. It was just awesome. Uh, and I've been looking forward to uh, Quiet Place 2 for some time since then. Uh, the first trailer for Quiet Place 2 was really good. Um, I'm looking forward to see what uh, John Krasinski does with part two. He was great as the director in part one. He was actually great as the father in part one. I like John Krasinski. He's uh, somebody I'm hoping that will be uh, Mr. Fantastic in uh, Fantastic Four. We'll see. But anyways, I'm looking to see what he does with it, how he moves forward with it. Because in the first trailer, if you remember, it looks like they're it's going to almost start off as like a prequel to the movie as you see the aliens landing in normal life going on. And then further in the trailer, you see where they are at now after Quiet Place. And that the monster, and it looks like they're, they're kind of going to go what, um, like what Walking Dead in them did. You know, yeah, you got the zombies, but you almost have to be more worried about the humans than the monsters. So that's where it was looked like it was headed in the trailer. It looks like you had to deal with the monsters, but you also had to deal with humans because, you know, the the greatest horror out there is other humans. Like it or not, that's the way this world is. Uh, but that's the way it looked like it was headed. So I'm looking forward to, to Quiet Place 2. Um, yeah, it's just uh, the first one was such a good movie. So I'm looking forward to part, uh, part two. So topic number three, Top Gun 2. Uh, that was brought up in the uh, news outlets this week. It looks like Paramount, Paramount turned down um, two offers, one from Netflix and the other one from uh, Apple TV, who has both of those um, have all the money in the world to play with. And I think Apple probably has the most money. But they're trying to get their own stuff and release on it. But it looks like Paramount turned, turned both Netflix and um, Apple down to buy Top Gun 2 to go directly to streaming. But Paramount, I think, is sink or swim. They are going to push this to the big screen. Um, Paramount believes they have a billion-dollar hit on their hands. I see a billion dollars, but it's going to be close either way. The, the first one was, what, 36 years ago? 34 years ago, something like that, Aaron? I mean, you're looking at the release date back in, I think it's 86. Is that 86? Yeah, 34 years ago. Yeah, 86. Have, is there a lot of people look out there looking forward to Top Gun 2? I'll watch it. I'll do. I'll watch anything that has to do with military in it, especially naval, naval aviation. I uh, love the first one because one of my favorite planes of all time was the F-14 Tom Cat. Um, but anyways, I go, let's go back. So it looks like the release date, uh, the question is, does Top Gun 2 stay on its release date, which is July 21st, or July of 2021? I don't know. That's going to be a toughie. I, you know, the, 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 the immunizations are moving, but they're moving at a little slower than what everybody thought they were going to be. We go into February tomorrow, so that gives you, what, February, March, April, May, June, July, six months? Maybe July 21st, 2021? I hope so. But I don't think it will, because a lot of other movies are moving the release date. Even, even movies that already set themselves up for summer releases have moved themselves to later in the fall, or pushing it to 2022. I was going to read off what the 2022 release dates look like, but it's a list. It's a, I mean, everybody's moving to 2022, and it's going to be just such a cluster of movies. So maybe they do try to stay in 2021. I mean, it's a gamble for Paramount. Um, as I think it has a $150 million budget. 
on that on Top Gun 2. So you add probably another 150, 200 in, you know, advertisement and all those other things that, you know, people don't think about it. So you're at 350 and I think uh, Apple and Netflix were going to buy it for like around 250 so I think they're just willing to take the chance on the big screen. Uh, I mean, if you, if you make, if you have a billion dollar movie, you're gonna profit seven hundred million. If you sell it, you don't. You, know, you might lose money. So I think that either way, hot, hell or high water, they're gonna push it to the, the the big screen. Which that's a movie that has to be on the big screen. Um, either way, I'm gonna go see it. Yeah, you know, even if it's on uh, the big screen or if somebody buys it up and puts it on streaming. But I'll definitely watch it. Um, looks like it, pretty much everybody that's you know still alive, of course, is going to be in the movie. But you know, I'm looking forward to it. So what are your thoughts on uh, Top Gun 2? Let me know. As well as let me know what your thoughts are on the Snyder Cut. That, that's big. That's big. So my final uh, thing I'm going to talk, tonight, talk about tonight is... WandaVision. Episode four. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, you know, if you listen to my first uh, review on WandaVision for episode one and two, I was ho-hum about it. It was okay. Episode three was great, but episode four. I mean, it starts off with the blip, which is after the Hulk snaps in Endgame. I think this is what they should have showed a little bit of, of, but they show this right in the first part of WandaVision, people coming back from the snap. Um, so you get to see Monica Rambo reanimate, sitting next to a hospital bed. That hospital bed, five years previous, would have been her mother, if you remember, was in Captain Marvel. You, she was suffering from cancer, so that hospital bed would have had her in it. But when she reanimates, re reanimates, there's nobody there. The bed is made up. You see her reanimate re into the, the chair, and she's like, okay, what's going on? Runs out, and you see people reanimating everywhere. So it was good to see the reanimation of people. I would have loved to have seen it in a bigger scale because what happened with people that – there's still going to be a lot of people that died from the snap – that couldn't have come back. You know, people in the helicopters, plane crashes, that sort of stuff. Okay, so then we go to where she worked, which was which is which was was sore. They can't she can't get into the office, so they let her in. And then they put her send her out on her first assignment to work on uh, why the town of Westview is there and it shouldn't be and the way they're thinking about it, and there's missing people that are from this town. And that's when you meet up with, uh, ah, what's his name? Uh, Agent Wu, if you remember him from the Ant-Man series. And one of the good parts about this movie, he actually does the card trick that uh, Ant-Man was trying to show him in the Ant-Man movies. He couldn't do it, couldn't do it. And he actually does it when uh, uh, Monica Rambeau comes up. So this, you know, it's just a kick back to the movies, which they've actually done a great job of in this in this series so far. So she sends up a drone to go towards the 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 town, and it hits the force field, disappears. And that drone was actually in episode one, if you remember, Monica. She picks up a helicopter. Well, that's a uh, uh, it's, it's a '50s version of that drone, the helicopter, and it has the sword thing on it. So she sees it disappear, so she goes over and touches the force field, and she keeps touching it, and then she gets sucked in. And then that's where you see her character appear in uh, WandaVision, her vision. Because, so after she uh, is sucked into the force field, Wu goes back, they set up his sword, sends in all this big team. And this is where, if you remember from the very first Thor, which is a great movie, by the way, they bring back Darcy Lewis, who is one of the tech experts. They bring in a bunch of tech, tech experts to try to figure out what's going on, what's this force field, what's it doing. So Darcy figures it out that it's they they can monitor this thing with old TVs because it's set up 
with the same radio bands as old TVs. So now for the rest of the the sitcom, you are pretty much watching her life as a sitcom from the agent's point of view. So you, you see the last four episodes in this episode through the the eyes of the sword members that are there. You also get to see Vision, I think, starting to figure some stuff out, which is kind of strange because he's dead. If you remember at the end of Endgame, which brings you to a really, really kind of a freaky scene is Wanda turns around and Vision's standing at the top of the stairs and he's that gray figure you saw at the end of Endgame with the, the dead white eyes and the big hole ripped out of his forehead. So that was pretty, pretty freaky. And then she shakes her head. She goes back into this vision again, talking. So you know, in the voice you heard over the radio, there was a couple scenes. Remember in episode two, they were sitting there. They were kind of doing that whole Stepford Wives scene where they're all sitting around eating all the wives. And there's the voice on the radio Who's doing this to you? Who's doing this to you? Well, that's Agent Wu. And they actually show him saying that when they figure out they can transmit in. And hopefully somebody inside can receive the message. So, and that's pretty much where they let, leave off on it. And it's going to be interesting to see where they go next. I have a couple of my ideas what's going to happen. One of the neighbors' name is Agatha. She's the nosy neighbor. So I'm wondering if they're referencing Agatha Harkness, which is a witch in some of the Wanda and Vision comic books. She was actually a nanny. If you remember, she was actually a nanny to uh, Reed Richards. So is she in this doing that? Or are you seeing maybe, could it be Manifesto coming in as a villain? I don't know. I'm thinking that you're going to see that Wanda is kind of like a villain. This is my opinion. I mean, because I can also see them going with, if you remember the comic book run, The House of M. Wanda's reality, then, the, you know, the kids, the twins um, die. This this last episode actually opened up a lot of different thoughts for me on this. Um, I got my new shirt, my Grogu shirt. He's wanted, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a it was a really good episode. So that was my four topics for tonight. Um, I said I had to move one because of the breaking news of the Josh Snyder cut, which I was really excited about. I think that is so cool. Um, so the one uh, one thing that I move to next week will be Morbius, the the movement on that movie, and I've got a couple other things that have been popping up the last couple of days. But so yeah, uh, WandaVision episode four we talked about. We talked about uh, Top Gun two. We talked about Quiet Place two, and we talked about just the uh, Justice League Snyder Cut. Um, please, if you haven't already. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. Like I said, I'm having fun doing these videos. I'm trying to get more people to subscribe, get more views. And if I see people are interested in this stuff, I will actually keep doing it. I enjoy doing it. Um, so, yeah. Again, remember, watch what you want to watch. Enjoy it. And you guys all have a great night. Take care of yourselves.